All right, everybody. Good evening. All right, we're doing something. I, I've teased you guys long enough. We are doing something a little different. We are going to be at the gravel lot today. The parking garage is full, unfortunately. <laughs> so that was my executive decision today was to uh, give you guys a show and do it from down here. And I did charge everything, all of everything in my arsenal to keep us going as long as possible today. So hopefully you guys enjoy today's show. Right now there's not a whole lot going on. There were several go heading out on the way or as I was setting up. So it is supposed to get busier here in just a little bit. As a matter of fact, let me check flight radar and see what we got going on first and foremost. Welcome in, everybody. Jenna B, Tristan, Molly, Jacqueline, Pip, William, Colin, Batman, Zoe, what's up? Zoe's over here next to us. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't miss anybody. Hope everybody's having a good week so far. Good start to the week. Give me one minute. Got to open my flight radar here. Had one southwest leave. Nope, it's on its way in. Coming in from Orlando. Arriving in six minutes. As a matter of fact, can I see that? I can see it. But I don't know that the camera will get it, though. That far away. Ah, there is something moving out there. Now, you guys are going to have to bear with me because I am struggling to see the laptop and all of the screens. So, yeah, Daryl's, I wish I could have made it up there today, but again, it, it was full. The signs down at this end were like, oh, part. Premier parking is full, and I was like, all right, or not Premier, whatever it is, whatever it's called. And I was like, all right, fine. We'll just do the uh, gravel lot. I'm doing all right, Jackie. I'm having a decent week, actually. Been busy at work. All right, let's see if we can see if I can do this now. I didn't really leave myself a whole lot of room, did I? And again, I can't see the monitor. All right, autofocus. Oh, where is that thing? There it is. Be easier if it was a bigger plane, but. Now, I'm going to have to play with focus quite a bit this evening as well, too. So, as you can tell, it doesn't want to focus on me. There we go. There's always trees in the way, you guys. Always trees. Make a quick adjustment to the tripod so it's a little smoother. We'll have Southwest come around in just a few moments from that same side there. Now we'll be switching back and forth manual autofocus due to the fence. Trying to make sure I can see everything. Sebastian, good evening. My foot's doing better, Matt man, thank you. It's a little hard for me to walk on, but I'm still pushing through my long days at work, so it is getting better. It's sore, though. It's the only reason why I'm having issues is it's sore. All the swelling and everything has gone down, so all the redness is gone. I don't know why I can't see this. gave us tickets. What? 
Dang it. See, that's happened to me before, Daryl. Like, I go up there, and it'll be like, oh, full. Then you'll get a ticket, and then you go up there, and then there's nobody up there. And you're like, why? Why is it like this? So I was just like, you know what? We're going to – I'm just going to stick with the gravel lot tonight and uh, run a full test on our um, equipment that keeps us powered when we're not – able to be on ground power that way we can see what kind of options we can have now the other thing too like i'm going to really have issues with when we do travel to places that are remote is it takes eight and a half hours to charge my battery i started charging it at seven seven twenty seven thirty this morning and uh it didn't char get fully finished until almost four o'clock so hopefully it will last us a while. I'm not e I haven't even turned it on yet. So, or I'm not even plugged into it yet. I'm plugged into a couple other different things. <laughs> Swelling in my head. You know what, Pip? <laughs> That's awesome. That is a good roast. I don't know what United's waiting on. There's nothing. Nothing close. So it is, the power outlets are in the fire escape. If you walk to the fire escape, it's on either side, depending on which end you're at. I'm assuming you're on the north end, facing like where this United is. So if you go out onto the, um, like as you walk out onto the fire escape, it's on the left. It's a little box on the left there. It's the one I always tend to use. Here comes our southwest. I probably shouldn't have parked this way. I <laughs> parked all weird. But I got all my cables situated and ready to go for when our battery dies. Our batteries. I have a big battery pack hooked to the uh, camera at the moment, and then the computer's running off of its own power. But I got to make sure that I don't let it get too low because then it. It'll die whether I plug it in or not. That's what happened to us a little while back. All right, we're going to try and go for southwest here. This one, again, coming in from Orlando. And of course, power tree or uh, power lines and trees and stop lights and everything not not nice for us plane spotters. All right, United. Now I got to switch back over and try and focus it here. thing does not want to cooperate today. It's the warm the warm weather has thinned out the fluid in my tripod. It might uh it should be here probably about 7:20 is what it's scheduled for. So we'll see um we'll see what time the 777 gets here. Now, as long as my tripod doesn't decide to do anything weird. There's that. Dylan, what's up? Welcome to 
our Tuesday show. Now you're going to hear a lot of traffic down here because I am right against the road. That is probably one of the only bad things about being down here is you're right up against the traffic. And I really have to watch, <laughs> I really have to try to watch flight radar because I won't know who's coming and when because I have no distance. Got a couple Delta connections headed in. Uh-oh, we got a Delta 757 coming in from Detroit. Hmm. Charter flight, I assume. Couple, of, like I said, a couple of Delta connections, Delta 757, and an American Airlines. Triple Seven is just 15 minutes out, so yeah, it's an hour early. It was telling me that it was going to be here at seven, so I don't know, or 7:20 on flight radar this morning when I checked. And then of course we've got the 767 from FedEx coming in in just 11 minutes now. So we're gonna have, have a lot of action for the next 15 minutes or so from all of these. Got two heavies, two connections, a 75 and an American. That's yeah, weird, it was showing me on the schedule that it was Scheduled to land at 7.20 today. I really can't. I can't tell nothing. I can't see. Everything is backlit. So, I, can, oh, like I said, honestly, I can't tell what looks good and what doesn't look good. Change my white balance back. I See, I even forgot to do that. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I don't <laughs> why I don't like this spot for doing shows is because of this stupid fence. I hate this fence. But unfortunately there's not a higher spot I can get to. There's a good spot over there where they're tearing down uh Etsy or Estes, whatever that trucking company's called. But sadly they closed it up before we even started doing live shows. That's a very fine line between the planes and the fence. I had some ravioli for lunch. Credit, what's happening, sir? I think I'm going to have to try a different kind of tripod head. Because the fluid, when the, when the seasons change, the fluids in the tripod change. Like it thins out. Oh, okay, here we go. First arrival. I do not see it.
That'd be a good shot when that triple seven flies over my head at four feet. <laughs> I'd say he's probably at 30 feet, 35 feet when they come over. 40 tops. Very, very close. Ooh, and I'm getting the uh, the breeze off of that. Hey, Sue Major. Hey, Brianna's in the house. What's up? About time you showed up to one of my shows. <laughs> I kid, I kid. No, I wish I could. I really wish we could get a different perspective. I wish I could get a little further west of the airport. So you guys are looking at the runway. So I need. I want to be over on the right side of the runway but there's just nowhere here at RDU to be on that side it's all trees and construction and I just can't get over there sorry Brianna uh oh another CRJ You can really see and hear the vortices when those come in. I don't know if you guys can hear the vortices, but it's such a creepy sound when you're out here and they pa and the vortices pass through the power lines. Of course, there aren't any power lines over here where I'm at, but last year, or a year before last, when I would stand over there at the trucking company, there's power lines over there. They pass, pass those vortices, hit the power lines. Man, it's just such a weird sound. And a United Embraer. All right, let's see who we got next. Got that Delta 757 coming in next. And then American Airlines coming in from Pittsburgh. That's an E-175. FedEx is going to beat out our 777. But they will hopefully be back-to-back -back arrivals. I don't know if Brad's working tonight or not. Now, I do have the sound levels turned down just a little because of the fact that traffic is going to be passing over our head, but also we have those cars going by. and They are very loud. Next up is the 757-200. Coming in from Detroit. So I'm assuming that that is going to be a uh, charter flight. What's up, Brad? There he is. How you doing, bud? Let's get ready for our 757 here. Oh, I can't see. <laughs> the sun is so in my face. Oh, Pip says turn it up. All right, I'll turn it up for the 757. See, I can't I can't look for the plane to monitor my, my sound level, so I have no idea. I'm sure you guys can hear that traffic now. All right, and I'll turn it up for the uh, triple seven and seven six seven. All right, we'll just—I'll turn it up right there and leave it. If you guys can't hear me, let me know. Here we go, seven five coming at you.
Yeah, Mac, I had I had the sound down last uh, on Sunday because of the fact that the wind was blowing so hard and it was messing with everything. So the uh, I had it turned I had it turned down for that reason. The wind messes with that microphone really bad that I have. Hopefully I'll upgrade sound equipment one day soon and try and get a uh, little bit longer microphone shot longer shotgun microphone somebody just smoky startup over there or what next time. Got the longest winglets of any of any plane. <laughs> Triple seven is three minutes away. We also have the FedEx seven six seven coming in next. So that'll be amazing. This is one of those spots that I was talking about. I need a truck or a van or or something to get over this fence. All right, we go from that to our first heavy. Where are you at? Come on, there she is. I do have one other spot, but it's it is not ideal for streaming. For 4K stuff that I've gotten in the past, it's perfect. But for streaming, there is no you can't see anything. Robbie, what's happening? You cannot see anything. Like other, I mean, you get a I can get a really good close up of the touchdowns, and that's it. And then them taxing out kind of the departure, but it's not it's not a good. Um, spot for uh, live stream. This one's all right. Yeah, I would love it if the airport would give me my own reserved parking place. Reserved Tuesdays, Wednesdays, or Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. <laughs> Otis, good evening. Yeah, I would love for them to give me my own personal parking spot, but uh, 
I am not that special. Brad Kemp gifting five Carolina Aviation Membership. Thank you so much again, Brad. Our man, Brad. See, I know it's not in focus right there. Come on. All right, next up's our triple seven. Should be flying over our head in just a few moments. Check me. On Facebook or Instagram? I'll check. Uh, yeah, I sent. I saw one you sent me the other day. Did you send me another one, John? Seven. Fresh from London. There's a bird on the fence. be long I think probably next week oh man we missed one of my favorite shots FedEx back taxiing because we were waiting on the, the American triple seven uh, I think next week Americans gonna go back to the 130 630 um, their summertime schedule so 130 to 630 yeah I, it Pip, it's very hard. If you saw me, it, the plane is like well past me before I can even look at it because of the <laughs> how long my, our lens is. That's what I said. I need that uh, the camera I've been prospecting, but one of these days, one of these days, it's got a great wide angle and it'll do, go all the way to 600 millimeters. Fantastic camera. I've seen a couple other folks use it, doing it on. Um, doing uh, plane spotting with it. I almost said live streaming with it. You know what's great about this spot though? I can get off my feet today. <laughs> I am not standing up at all unless I absolutely have to. Like for Southwest, I'll stand up for that because there's not very many of them. But everybody else, nope, I'm sitting on the back of my car. It's like, I'll take a little bit of a breather today. Just have a seat. Check out the wingtip vortices coming off of that 
CRJs are so dramatic with that. None of the other ones. You don't see it too much on any of the other ones. But the CRJs, boy, they throw those wingtip vortices out there, and you can really see them. It's really awesome. see it now it's right in the sun it's one of the news choppers I think triple step triple seven still has it's waiting on the gate yeah no. waiting on somebody to get a move on or so there's a little bit of a different perspective of the gates down there it goes right there to the one on the corner when it goes into the terminal there. After being at work all day. <laughs> I know I need to I need to bring some some food. You know what sounds really good speaking of pig? I could go for some barbecue right now. Some city barbecue. Man that was so good. Brianna ordered some, not last week, week before last, I think. She got like some big platter or whatever. Man, talk about good. I didn't, like, I didn't even care for their sides, which is fine because, you know, when you go to a barbecue place, you care about the, the chicken, the brisket, the pulled pork. Man, it was so good. Got arthritis in your foot, Molly? Yeah, I feel like that's what my problem is. So my foot kills me like almost 100% of the time. <laughs> that's why it's kind of nice to just have a day to just chill out. Because I'll, I'll stand at work eight, nine hours, and then I come and give you guys shows. Depending on how long we're here. Typically four hours. I, now, tonight, I don't know. I'm going to try to give you guys the MD-11 departure, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm monitoring all of my batteries and stuff at the moment. Won't be too long before i got to plug the laptop in. It's down to about 57%. But Big Mac sauce, please. Yeah, I do like some McDonald's Big Mac sauce. But McDonald's, so, I know we're, here we go, we're going to talk about food, but, dude, McDonald's, no, I'm, I'm kind of done with fast food. If I eat out anymore, it better be, like, a decent restaurant, because fast food places have gotten to the point where their food is, like, not great, but their prices are decent food prices, and I'm like, uh, no, better back up with that. But I do love a good double quarter pounder, though. From McDonald's. But uh, paying eleven dollars and some change for that, some fries and a drink, no thanks. I'm done with all that. <laughs> Shoot, I got a McChicken, a frappe, and a large fry, and it was almost eight bucks. I was like, what? Two McChickens. It's like, come on, man. Why are y'all so expensive now? Oh, I can't see. Where'd that CRJ just go? There it is. Alright, got somebody coming over. I haven't checked flight radar. Yeah, I love this spot, Brad. The only issue I have with this spot is the stupid fence. And I, again, I wish I could move over across the road and up a little bit to where the trucking company was. Because it was that was a fantastic spot. You were overlooking the fence. It was great. I have an amazing shot of the 777 leaving. Coming this way, facing us. And, uh, from there, man. but shortly after I got that shot, 
they were like, oh, yeah, we're closing this down. You can't be here anymore. And I'm like, what? Come on. That's what I heard, John. They're they're expensive all over the world. Works out to about three fifty. Yeah, it just they uh, I just can't I can't believe it, you know. And the, and the food isn't any better. Like you would think for for some of the prices, they'd make it a little bit better, but. They really haven't. Check out the CRJ just hiding over here in the trees. I gotta check flight radar while I've got a moment. Oh, we got another FedEx 767 coming in from Atlanta, Georgia. Arriving in just six minutes. Frontier arriving in two minutes. And United arriving now. Exactly, Daryl. That's why I love being up at uh, the parking garage. And thank you, William. I appreciate you telling your friends at, at Wegmans about our show. I really appreciate that. The more folks we have watching, the, the better. <laughs> Devin, what's happening, sir? Long time no see. Hope you're doing well. Carolyn, good evening. All right. Who do we have up next? Before I get, a, get distracted again. Frontier coming in from Atlanta as well. Arriving in, well, according to flight radar, zero minutes. Another Delta connection, and then we will have our other FedEx 767 arrival in just a few minutes. Hey, Carolyn. Hope you're doing all right. Yeah, Devin, we we chose this this location today because of the fact that when I drove in, I drove, I do my normal thing. I stop at the observation deck, and it was like, oh, parking garage is full, and I was like, all right, fine. So I just I was already ready and prepared to do a show down here today because I want to test some of this equipment that I have, some of these batteries and stuff. So I'm I'm glad I decided to do it. And if you guys enjoy this location, we may do it more often. Yeah, I'll be here at least until 9. As long as the equipment holds out, I'll be here until 9. Not, well, 9.30. I don't know that we'll stay till 10. Because nighttime down here is not very ideal. Because of the, the landing lights and everything else gets in the way. Plus, you guys know the performance of this camera is not the greatest at night for whatever reason. Santa Claus, what's up, sir? Hope you're doing well in the North Pole. A little crab action there. Got a good gust of wind out of the west. <laughs> Man, it would have been kind of. It would have been really nice to be down here on Sunday, wouldn't it? And all that, all that drama we had with the wind. I think where we were was fantastic, but I think down here would have been just a little bit better.
Absolutely, CMOS. I love daylight saving. As a matter of fact, I'm sitting here soaking up the sunshine right now. Love every minute of it. It's good. I can go home after work, get some stuff done. Hopefully tomorrow I can go home and wash my nasty car. It's been sitting for a week and it was sitting in my yard instead of <laughs> in my driveway. Because <laughs> my because Miss Carolina moved the car and where she moved it it's a very dirt ridden area there's not a lot of grass <laughs> so the side of my car is disgusting looking and I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed to be driving around in it but personally Molly my favorite place is the gravel lot to come and be a spectator, but to do a show, I'd much rather be on the parking garage. <laughs> Brad, you can't you can't answer that question, Brad. No, no, no. You cannot answer that question. Delta CR chairs in our 717. That's 717. I didn't look at it close on flight radar. There you go, the wingtip vortices of the left side there. So cool to see that in person too. Sometimes you can't sometimes you can see it with the naked eye, but sometimes you can't. More or less you gotta have the camera going, but I should snap a couple of pictures of that. Barry, what's happening, sir? This shot right here is going to be fantastic when the sun goes down. We are in golden hour now. Thank goodness. Golden hour from this location is spot on. Getting all the presents ready for me. <laughs> Thank you, Brad. I thought it was when I when I saw the end of it. You guys will never guess what I feel like the end of hey, another type R. Hey, hey, come back. Come over here. Ooh, that's a new one too. White. Sorry. Squirrel. <laughs> so the in, the the where the APU is, the exhaust looks reminds me of a um, a plastic cigar tip <laughs> right food food would food and bathrooms in the parking garage would be fantastic I have to, you know, take a break to go over to the bathroom if I want to, because I have to walk all the way to either Terminal A or Terminal One or Terminal Two. <laughs> I'm like, man, I don't want to do that. I don't walk that far. <laughs> all right, we got a FedEx seven six seven coming. I hear it. Where you at? There you are. Brad, too bad you can't get me a spot on the ramp to stream from. Hint, hint, talk to your boss. <laughs> like, hey, I know a guy who does a live show. He wants some airport access. Can we do that? I'll even I'll even bring all my equipment through security. <laughs> through employee security. Especially since that's not as intimidating as going through TSA security. <laughs> Why is this guy carrying a big tripod? Uh, we don't know.
Molly goes, I go. <laughs> All right, so this will be a great shot now that the sun is a little further down. I can see a little bit better, and we will get the back taxi of FedEx. Is that Alaska waiting for a gate? or Because I didn't see them come in. And, uh... So I don't... Plug in the laptop here just to be safe. We're going to see what happens. Slow down a minute. Man, they're leaving early. I guess they've been here about an hour. I can see a little bit of it, Daryl. You'll see here in just a second as the FedEx makes its way over how much you can actually see. Actually, I don't know that I can because of the trees. I can see the canopy with the naked eye. We'll see what the camera picks up. But. I can actually see my monitor a lot better now. Yeah, there you go, Daryl's. I got the uh, parking garage in sight. I can't zoom in. I mean, I could zoom in a little bit more. It'll look like poopy doop, but you might be shadowed where I can't see you, but I am focused on the corner on the seventh floor there, though. That's over a mile away. <laughs> Eight to twenty. I love this shot right here. What do you guys think of that? Absolutely love this shot. When the lighting is right, that shot is perfect. ERB, what's happening, dude? Daniel, what's happening? Ouch. Alright, we're 
we're going to go for this arrival for just a minute, but I want to catch these planes taxiing this way. I absolutely love this shot. Seems like a good spot to look. So, it's off of a road called Lumley Road. And you can drive around the parking garage there, and there's a, a little exit road. If you're still at the end, this the north end of the parking garage, look off the end, straight off the end of it, and look. Um, there's a little road right there, and that's the road you'll take, and it t it'll bring you all the way out here. And that's Alaska Airlines. Love this shot. Do I do I do? Is an H hotel. <laughs> You know what? If we had a if we had a hotel or something, I would be like, "Hey, is there any way I can, you know, just use some space?" And I will shout you guys out, you know, to the heavens and back if you guys give me space. <laughs> All right, Alaska should pop out there. I really want to go to that berm. See that big hill right there? I really want to go up there one day, but I think that's beyond the fence. It's the other the other hill I'm thinking about. Oh, I do love this view, Molly. I always have. But as far as doing it for live, it's been it's been a little difficult. Let's 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 put it that way. It's the first time we've really been able to try it. To like I did before we got all you wonderful people in here. I tried a couple of sh shows from here just as test test shows, and. Uh, They uh, they were okay. I, it's just the fence. I've had to learn how to cope with the fence and the uh, focusing issues. As you can see, that that one going out's not very in focus because I'm in manual focus. So then, if I do that, it yeah, it's a really fine line. So I don't I don't mess with it. So if you do have some shots that are blurry, that's why, because I'm not focusing and neither is my camera. Plus there are a lot of heat waves. See ya. Alaska back to Seattle. Yeah, John, I, there aren't any businesses near the airport, sadly. Not where you can see the, see the actual airport. The only place I could think would be to go to FedEx and be like, hey, can I climb to the roof of your building and, and do a show? Or even the uh, UPS building or something. You know what I mean? Like, there's no, there are no businesses, no hotels, no nothing within a good enough radius of the airport. And the airport sits up on a hill. Everything surrounding the airport goes downhill as you leave the airport. You're like, ugh. Vincent, what's happening, sir? <laughs> yeah, 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 Brad, no heat waves. Yeah, I, w I would love to see something, like, really close to the airport. Now, again, I have another location, but you'll see, like, 10 seconds of the plane as it touches down, and then it goes behind the trees, and it it's over behind the uh, observation area. Now, I have had another thought about talking to the general aviation side. I was going to do that on Sunday, but I, uh, I had some other stuff that to get done before I could leave the house to bring you guys Sunday's show. 
but general aviation side has a balcony and I don't know if it's open to the public it wasn't for a long time it was then it wasn't and uh, the only problem with doing a show from general aviation is you'd see nothing but southwest the other issue with that is is how many southwest do we actually see on the show not very many so it wouldn't be a very action-packed show I mean we probably see a lot of the private jets the one reason they would definitely tell me no is because you are overlooking where all the general aviation planes and jets and private jet all that is sitting and so that my thing would be is they would tell me no because of privacy privacy concerns so I'm like eh. but it never hurts to ask I just haven't I haven't had time to get over there to do it yet Are you back in auto? How did you do that? Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, and we don't we don't see a lot of Spirit or Avello. I think we saw what two on Sunday, the whole six hours, two Avellos and what four, maybe five Southwest. I think. Granted, the action would be right up in your face, but there wouldn't be very much action because everything, everything else lands on this side for Terminal 2. Oh yeah, Brad, I want to go to those one of those two hills, and I know exactly how to get to them. It's just I don't know who to talk to, whether it's the airport or the construction company to find out and I don't know if the airport closes that gate so it'd be my luck I'd get in there and get stuck <laughs> so I'd have to figure that out too um there are a couple of private hangars um we also have SAS which is a private company they have their own private security and everything, so I don't mess with them too much. I'll sit outside their building every now and then. And they'll be like, "Hey, uh, you gotta, you gotta move on." And I won't even be near their building, and it's it's got a coded gate and everything else. So I'm like, "Yeah," wouldn't even know how to get in there, other than to hit the call button on their box. But I believe so. West Internet. What road is this? Lumley Road. I can't. No. This is Mount Harmon. I can't see the sign over there under Lumley. It's hidden behind another sign. But I believe it is. Yeah. I, I would like to get. Now I have had private tours of course you know you guys know about the the towers and all that stuff but i've had a, a private tour of one of the the hangars um, i haven't been up there in like six months because it's been cold i only like to go up there in the summer and that's the spot that i like to get like the 10 second touchdown shots and those are usually the the slow-mo videos that i do but um yeah I just there's just not a lot of a lot of space around here and I like I said I would reality I would love to be over on that gravel one of those two gravel hills on the right side of the airport that way in at night or in the evening like now the Sun will be at our back Oops, got an arrival Here we go, here we go.
Brian Lloyd, what's happening, sir? The Everything Kid, what is happening? Got Frontier coming in next in about two minutes. Another American Airlines coming in. That is a 737 coming in from Dallas. And we've got another E-175 coming in from Nashville. It's not a very busy night. I look at the... at all the flights before I came out here, and I was like, ah, we only have 164. Would have been nice to have what we had on Sunday, but the sun's not quite down far enough yet to give you guys sunset yet. Still in my, still in my face. UCB, what's happening, sir? How are you this evening? Again, this this show also I might can you know can consider a test because of the fact that we are testing the equipment. It is not as interesting when there's no flights in and out by any means. That is one of the reasons I don't like this spot <laughs> it's because of the fact that there's just when there's nothing going on there's nothing to look at as you guys can see we can we're, we're checking out this one plane on the tarmac and that's it nothing else happened thank you guys for those likes we are one hour into the show make sure you hit that like button if you have not yet done so. We do have the sunset coming up. Um, MD-11 departure at 9.15 and a whole bunch of action in between, I think. Not gonna, we're not going to stay past the MD-11 departure, I don't think. No, probably not. I know the 777 is going to leave and this, that, and the other, but it'll be dark. We'll just we'll see when we get there. Sorry, I'm checking some stuff behind the scenes here. All right, next up is Frontier. Coming in from Philadelphia in A321. Spot the Jaguar livery. I think we had that one here back in the fall, actually. And I hear it. Sorry, I'm watching the birds. There's a big old flock of birds right in the flight path. I was like, oh, don't get them. Little birds, not big birds. They would have just turned into powder, turned into dust. <laughs> I know that's probably a little dark, but it's exactly what would have happened. Dang, really 5,000 feet per minute? Jeez, that, that's crazy. Now I know the, uh, the uh, 757 is absolutely nuts when it comes to that. Molly Gift in One Carolina Aviation membership. Thank you, Molly.
Yeah, it would be small birds. I don't even know what kind of birds these are. They were little. And I was like, oh, they're so close. <laughs> you could see them, like, kind of swoop down away from the plane. They're like, oh, this thing is coming at us. <laughs> see, now is getting to be that perfect lighting in the background there you can really see everything with the especially the heat the heat waves coming out of the engines and stuff it's nice Vincent with a Carolina aviation membership thank you sir Got that membership train flowing. That's seven new members tonight. Thank you, guys. And I think one renewed. Brianna got hers renewed. All right, here comes another car. Okay, oh, there's a get over the, the vortices on the left side of your screen. As soon as they come in, you guys you guys check that. It's awesome. Got a good one there off that 737. You guys hear that? <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that or not, but I did. Whoa, what a sound. Sky 5 or ABC 11 coming back in. And I don't think we're going to see too much more of that one. It's behind the trees now. And you got this sign in the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm on Mount Harmon, straight across the road from the big glass RDU sign. Sitting on the hill, the intersection. Andy Taylor, what's up? How are you doing? Really see, I wish I had just a little bit more zoom and a little less zoom so we could really see what they're doing right now in the cockpit there. I have a little bit more zoom, but it's not gonna, the quality would be terrible. get over those vortices. That is one of the best things about this spot, for sure. The sun is almost ready to set. Zoom out a little bit. It's as far out on the zoom as I can go, but there you go. 
little bit of sunset action. Clouds did pick up a little bit, it looks like. Hopefully that'll get way prettier when the, uh, the lower it gets. Thank you, Brian Lloyd. I try my best. <laughs> now, we don't have any planes flying close by. I was going to say, we had something flying by. I saw one a minute ago I wanted to try and get, and I was like, no. we had something else going on. Arrival, I think. And I missed it. Speaking of arrival, here we go. that's from that plane or that was just just the wind in general oh, and I didn't even whoops I didn't even have that zoomed in the mess but yeah I did too I didn't zoom it out the first time I hit the wrong button now when these landing lights come on as you guys can see right there in the middle of your screen they're gonna be very very annoying <laughs> I'm surprised they don't have the nav lights on already and blinking, but they don't. Heading to Newark. I had a friend of mine's wife was on the 430, 440 flight to Newark. She's headed to Rome with some some school kids. Man, they get to go to Rome for their high school, whatever. He's like, yeah. It's like, what kind of school does she work for? He's like a private one. I was like, oh, that makes sense. So they were flying to Newark to pick up another flight over to Rome. Oh, this would be a cool shot. There's that private Cessna coming in over here on the left-hand side. It's a little harder for me to catch those because of the way I'm standing. I should have parked the other way. I parked, you know, straight in the space, but... There you go, a little two-for-one 737 action. One departing, one lining up. Me too. I was I was a public school kid. I think what our our trip was to the beach or something, or to D.C. I can't remember. I think our eighth grade trip was to to the Outer Banks, and then our um, high school trip was to D.C. If I remember correctly, I didn't do either one of them. <laughs> it was my choice, not not any other reason. I was like, you know what? No, I'll stay home. I went, stayed home, went to school every day. It's like a party all week, too. They're like, yeah, we can't make you like do a bunch of homework and stuff because they're not here. Another nice two-for-one American shot here. 737 getting a move on. Yeah, we, I went to two schools. That was it. I went to the, the elementary school slash middle school. It was all in one building. And then I went to the high school for the remainder of the year. So <laughs> JetBlue A220. Yeah, as a matter of fact, i got to check flight radar here. 
Coming in from Mickey Mouse Town, that is a 300 too. Now you guys won't probably hear that one fly over. They're so quiet. They just whoosh. <laughs> and no, I will not do that again, so don't ask. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are enjoying today's show. It is a little bit different. Thank you guys for tuning in. I know difference not always easy to accept. <laughs> not when it comes to being nothing to look at when there's nothing happening. <laughs> but, but, we can all sit here and chat. And I promise I won't eat on camera. It's a little running joke I have about another show that I've watched in the past. Like, would you guys really want to sit and watch me eat an entire meal? Like, come on. I wouldn't want to watch that. I did. Actually, I didn't. I had it on on the TV while I was sick. And I was messing around on my phone and laptop working. <laughs> and I'm like, <sighs> I wonder if people would really pay to watch me eat. Because <laughs> they were getting, like, they, you know, YouTube, obviously. And uh, they were getting super chat and stuff and they're like oh it looks so good I'm like really <laughs> I'm like come on now see Tristan that's what we were talking about on Sunday I asked you guys Sunday if you guys would watch a live travel show like, say we go to Charlotte or we go to D.C. Um, first off, the travel there. Be out the front windshield of the car. I'd be able to see the chat chat with you guys as kind of as, as I can, obviously, since I'd be driving. But the other thing, too, was if we go, say, to D.C. or even to Charlotte and stay for a couple of days if the museums and stuff allow it would you guys watch a live stream of say the museums or something to that nature now if you guys do if if we do this and we make a big enough presence if you guys watch it a lot over on this channel then I was thinking about making a extension to this channel and I already have a name picked out by the way an extension to this channel so it would be like an in-between so you guys will get ready for the plane spotting show but you can watch me make it to the airport would I do one coming home uh, I don't know maybe but definitely going to the airport Possibly going to the museums when when time you know time permitting stuff like that. I mean this is this is like summertime, fall time, and we may we'll try a couple episodes when we go to Charlotte again and see how you guys like it. And uh, but if that's something you guys are interested in, I've been giving it a lot of thought. Especially, like I said, after some of the shows that I've watched over the past week. So, we'll see. Man, there's nothing going on. Got uh, three arrivals coming in and a text message. Message. All right, we do have American Airlines up next. Coming in from JFK, New York on an E-175. It says zero minutes. I give it about 30 seconds. Thank you, guys. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll try something, something like that. Like I said, it'll be, you know... You guys will be watching out the windshield of the car, and I'll be trying to, you know, carry on conversation with you guys if possible. 
um, stuff like that. We can listen to music together. We can ride down the highway together. You know. <laughs> Maybe we can stop into some unique truck stops and be like, hey, look, check this out. I have to figure out how to take you guys from the car to the inside, but I do have a I do have a gimbal. I don't know if I can hook that into the car, like charge it in my car or not. Yeah, I'm having to play with the focus a little bit more here. All right, next up is our A220, arriving in just two minutes, I believe. It says one minute. I'll give it it. <laughs> So, I don't know when we're going to be able to come back to Charlotte. I would like to do it this weekend, but because last month was so slow, and of course, being sick, just all the drama last month, my father-in-law, my stepfather passing away, and this, that, and the other, um, I don't know if we'll make it in March, but we're going to try to make it we're sometime around the beginning of April. We'll see. Now that's not a definite no, that's not a definite yes. So just bear with us on our travels. I only get like one, maybe two weekends a month to do anything, you know, outside of RDU and outside of the area. I do work a lot. I do work one weekend a month, which... <laughs> All right, John Southwell, have a good evening. Hopefully I'm not missing you guys' messages as I'm watching for other planes. I hear an A220. Big boom. Will we hear the whale noise tonight? I doubt it. I'll be able to hear it, but I don't know if the sound equipment will be able to pick it up over a mile away. <laughs> now, when this thing departs, absolutely, you'll be able to hear it. Not the best deal. <laughs> It is, Brian Lloyd. I am, You know what I'm doing right now? I am actually relaxing. This is probably the most chill show I've done ever. <laughs> I'm actually sitting on the back of my car, just operating the camera, watching you guys. So they became mods because they're here all the time. Molly and I talked about mods, who we were looking for in mods, and uh, they seem to be the best fit for the show. I need like a couple more Mollies too. <laughs> So if anybody knows another Molly, you know, <laughs> darn right I'm the definition of chill, but well, when I'm not stressed out, hey, this will be a cool shot, Ow, and it's not the one you think it is, yeah, as long as I can see it, I gotta find it, gotta find it, there it is, there you go. How about that shot?
Check that out. I'm almost out of tripod though. Whoops. Oh, and it's only going to look cooler the farther away it goes. Oh, that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> I'm out of tripod space. You guys wanted the moon. Let's do that really, really fast as we do have an arrival. Whee! Fast little arrival. Hey, where'd you go? Look at that. There he is. Little private jet. Virgin Atlantic to London. Thank you, Brad. I thought I saw red engines, but I wasn't sure if it was red engines or just the sunlight playing tricks on me. <laughs> no way. Molly does a great job. Fantastic job, Colin. <laughs> Evan said, time out. All right, who do we got next? Yep, got a United coming over my head, and we got a Southwest. Southwest is just going to have to uh, I'll deal with it, because I don't think I'm going to have enough time to try and swing over. Even though that would be a really great shot, since well, it's not backlit, but it is a lot darker here now. Let me zoom out. Get us ready for our United arrival. We'll go back to the moon again as it lays down a little further. It's very high on and off to the southeast. <laughs> Who's better than <laughs> Oh man, you guys are funny. All right. Night it is. Southwest. Let's give you your moment in the spotlight here. Literally a moment, because you're going to go right behind the trees, power line. Did I? I made a boo boo, didn't I? No, I didn't. Never mind. I have a really cool shot of Southwest uh, Colorado 1 between these two uh, street lamps. Actually, I think it's between the other two street street signals there. And they I don't know if they ever used it, but they asked me for permission to use the photo, but it's a great photo. It's over on Instagram. You can check that photo out over there on our Instagram page. I need to start working on the Facebook page. But now that it's summertime I can get out here and work on photography again. <laughs> In the wintertime I was reluctant to do it that and we were doing our shows and everything else so ooh race car actually I think that's a motorcycle sweet sounds of my childhood 
had a racetrack not too far from my house growing up. Part of the reason why I enjoy racing so much. Anyway. <laughs> Alright, back to... Now hopefully this shot will only get better as the night goes on. If you leave it here long enough, you guys can actually see the moon moving across the sky. Did that for a sunrise video out here one time. That's on my personal pages, though. And then I sped it up. It was really cool. Put some really nice music with it. It's good stuff. Thank you, Molly. Yep, I've uh, got a Delta CRJ coming over in just a moment. Man, that looks like it for a little bit, too. Got a FedEx feeder, and we got another 757 from Delta coming in in about 20 minutes or so. I'm going to guess 20 minutes. Uh, it's a car. Is it a car? Yeah, it's a truck. I thought I heard the... Uh, Delta. It is very close though, so let's get ready for Delta. Actually, you know what? I should have just left that there. There you go. <laughs> so what do you guys think of this spot? Is it alright? It's, it's okay? How am I doing on battery? The computer looks like it's doing okay. It's holding charge. It's actually charging up. And we haven't lost a single bar from our external battery pack. So we could go until midnight, probably. Probably go even later. So this is a nice test for our new equipment. Got this equipment for Christmas, and I have not had time to uh, time to test it. Really. Ooh, this is Listen for the wind, the vortices. You guys should hear those. Probably well after the plane touches down. That's usually how it goes. Look at them. That is the most unique thing about this spot is the wingtip vort the the vortices, especially the CRJ. Ready? There it is. Ah, what a sound. <laughs> Hey, you guys want to see our 757 early? Oh, no, there it is. There's our Delta 757 coming in from Atlanta. Off in the distance. Are these birds or bats? Yeah, we'll get a little bit of Christmas light action down here this evening, too. This is one of my favorite places tonight, night plane spot. How long can we track the 757 from Atlanta? It's 
gonna peel off and make a right here in a minute, or a left here in a minute. And yes, by the way, I do remember when Jonathan was here. <laughs> and now he's back. What's up, Evan? <laughs> steady, steady camera. There we go, our 757 making that left bank. Dang it, they're quiet. Got it. One lined up? What is that? It's getting to that time of the night where I can't see anything. Already. Not with the naked eye. Not over at the airport anyway. He's going to turn into a little bit of a right bank here in a second. A CRJ or a 757? What is that? CRJ. About two seconds. As soon as I saw the name. See you, Jenna. Have a good night. See you again on Thursday. I think we'll be back. Yeah, because he's making his way around. This one will be flying in over our heads here in a little bit. At some point, I'm going to lose it. It's going to go hide behind some trees or something. And there they are. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen soon. That was a long shot to hold, too. Whew. I was almost holding my breath I'm trying to do that. Who do we got? What do we got happening out here? I don't know. Somebody backpacking? Anybody hiding over here behind the tree? Doesn't look like it. You can kind of see FedEx over there doing their thing. Darn all these bushes and trees. <laughs> ah. Good look at the terminal there. Forty three accounts. I'll log into each one of them, give us a like. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Do we have anybody? I got that FedEx ATR, I think it's gonna land over on the 
east side of the airport. And then, of course, our Delta 757 we were watching there a moment ago, making its way around. It's making its way out to turn on fire. I like this spot because I'm actually I can car spot too a little easier. Nice loud car goes by. Spot it. <laughs> now it's dark, so it's it's a little harder to see them. There's three lights down here. Probably won't be too many uh, yeah not <laughs> Brian Lloyd not from this far away you Google Maps the distance from here to the, the corner of the terminal it's like one point something miles away <laughs> So I can show you guys the triple seven, and again, it like I said, that's the triple seven right there is one point something miles away. <laughs> Be, <laughs> they would be some really loud bells if I could hear the bells from here. But again, like I said, when there's nothing going on and we're here, uh, makes it a little more difficult. Because then you're stuck looking at the terminal. <laughs> and nothing else. So I, I try to give you guys as many or all parking garage shows as possible. So I think this summer, I'll, um, when it comes down to it, I'll start s scheduling and uh, paying for my parking spot in advance so I know I'll at least have a spot so I don't have to park. Hello. Uh, so I don't have to park on the bottom level and hike up seven floors with all my equipment. Last time I did that, we were told to leave. I was so angry. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're going to make me hike all the way back down here early? Come on. Just got here. It's great. I should have asked her for a ride. Been like, hey, can I get a ride down to my car? Luckily, Tony was there, though, but... Tony gave, Tony gave me a, 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 a nice ride down to, back down to the car. Now see, the other thing too, here's where it gets iffy, it's starting to get dark. Quality's not quite as good as it should be, in my opinion. I thought I saw somebody making their way out here. Yep, our 757 is up next. Ow. I need to build me a seat. If I, if I continue to do this on the back of my car, I need to build me a seat or a cushion. <laughs> or give me a cushion. Where did that sound go? That's our Dago. There it goes. Hide behind the trees over there. Let's get ready for our Delta 75.
<laughs> There's only one. Yes, I know you. <laughs> ah. You need another account that says no indeed. <laughs> or indeed not. All right, here we go, 757. That FedEx and ATR backpack, too, didn't we? See, I'm not used to this perspective. But all kinds of things happen. Uh oh. Got more freight moving. See you, Evan. Have a good evening. A also. Our next one up is JetBlue Airways coming in from Boston on an A320-200. Arriving in two minutes. It is. It is very normal. That's the wingtip vortices you're hearing. It's crazy sounding, isn't it? It's a good sound. I like that sound. Hey, there's our CRJ finally popping out. You should uh, go across the road and hear it at the... Uh, go through those power lines. Talk about a crazy sound. <laughs> It sounds insane across the road over there. Battery hasn't even moved. It's the Vortex. And that CRJ is getting a move on. I really hope you guys are able to hear it. Because it is a really stunning sound. If you've never heard it before, it's really... You're like, wait, what was that? <laughs> like, why is there so much wind passing over my head? And then you realize, oh. And it's like seconds after the plane flies over. I mean, not from right here, most of the time, by the time they get here, the plane is touched down already. Uh-oh, aborted takeoff. That's a first. I've never caught that here before. Everett. Thank you so much, sir. Glad you could make it in this evening. Hope you enjoy the view as well. Let me put that up on the live show there. Thank you very much, Everett. Again, I hope you are enjoying the show. I wonder why they had a uh, aborted takeoff there for the CRJ. Interesting. Something not set right, I'm assuming. Uh-oh, my chat thing has moved. Let me see it. Let me see it. Back over. All right, I'm going to put another message up. Let's see how that... Yeah, that's a little better. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> Will that show up on the live? Me moving it? We're about to find out, huh? realize it had moved. Well, we get another good shot of the Mantis here. Indeed not. There you go. See, I like that. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. Yeah. 
Here we go. Mantis. Departure number two. Actually, we're gonna. I think we're gonna catch JetBlue before that. But uh, <laughs> the Mantis didn't make it. Indeed, not. All right. Hold on. <laughs> Deborah Ray. Good evening. Hope you are doing well. We did have a decent sunset. Not our not our normal Carolina sunset this evening, sadly, but the wings right here. See the vortex, vortex, vertices, whatever you want to call them. Oh, not on this one. Darn it. We need another CRJ. You won't be able to see them once it gets dark. What's UPS up to? Have they moved yet? Maybe they're in position. Yep. Alright, let's go back to the Delta Mantis. Will he depart this time? Are you ready now? Like, I'm sure the folks on board that plane were like, wait, what just happened? We were supposed to be lifting off, not slamming on the brakes. <laughs> 90 likes. Thank you guys so much for the love this evening. Again, I hope you guys are enjoying this, this location. It is a little different. It is a little awkward. It is a little bad at night sometimes. <laughs> But I love this spot. To just spot, it's it's a it's an awesome place to be, especially when it's really really busy out here. And got a little engine glow from that CRJ as well. I can see it. Check that out. What another movement is that? UPS again. To the dock. Yep, he's gone this time. Yeah, we got we got tons of lights the ones the the ones that are closest to us are the ones that are annoying and they're not even bright like <laughs> i look at them and i'm like all right you guys aren't very bright the camera's like oh yes they are me nuts. and i love the heat waves off the engines this this spot really gives you a different perspective you feel a little closer to the action i know we've done the observation deck back on Thanksgiving and, and stuff, but this spot's just that much more better. Thank you, Matt, man. Delta 737. Thank you, Molly. Coming in from LAX. There we go. plane already touched down when you could hear them. <laughs> it's amazing. There you go. All you guys that love the lights. Hello. UPS poking its head out from behind the tree.
Let's see, what else is happening down there? Looks like we got a cup headed this way. And I hear a 300 spooling. Are you moving? Are you sitting there? What you doing? <laughs> hey, you, UPS. Oh my goodness. Dude, I would love to go to the SAS Hill. For arrivals, that would be absolutely amazing. I'd be afraid that one of the pilots may call me in. Because I know the tower can't see me. Yes, I have a person who works in the tower, but they might be like, hey, uh, you can't be here. <laughs> If not airport security, SAS security would come out and be like, hey, what are you doing? All right, I'll be quiet so you guys can hear this. The plane's going to be touching, touching down. You'll hear it. Out. If the weather around here stayed like this year round, man, <laughs> today's weather was amazing. The weather right now is amazing. It's a little cool, but it's not cool enough to need a jacket. Now, if it were windy, absolutely. Now, don't forget, if you enjoyed that departure, give it, let's see, in about an hour and 10 minutes, and we'll have our MD-11 departure. Hey, there's our 717. You remember me guys, remember telling you guys that this thing looks like the uh, plastic tip <laughs> of a cigar? That's exactly what the, uh, the tail of these look like to me. Why, I don't know, but that's just what that looks like. But we do have the MD-11 departure in just one hour and some change. Got another UPS getting ready to fly over. Frontiers out there. We got a lot of action getting ready to happen. A lot of traffic at the end of the runway there. Can't see all of it because they're all hiding behind this, the little hill there. But now the A300 flying over right about... Uh, four. <laughs> Very funny, yes, indeed. Or not, indeed. Indeed, not. Jonathan, Evan in Plains. <laughs> CMOS did that once, and I almost ended the show. I was like, all right, I got to figure out what's going on. I freaked out. He took the name, he took everything. I was like, dude.
All right, just chatting with Daryl's there. Apologies, he, uh, apologies, guy. <laughs> it's nice meeting you guys. And you guys stop in and say hi. Got quite the st quite the stack up out here. Like, let's see, what is light radar? Well, frontier shut off. Is that? Ah, oh, you can't see anything past the seven six seven there. I was gonna say maybe we can get. Uh, UPS back taxi, but that's not going to happen. We got the cigar in our way. I'm going to start calling it a cigar. What do you guys think? You guys like that new name for this? <laughs> oh, man. Where's that camera now? I sent out a video last night. Somebody did a show at, and you guys hear me talk about this all the time, but it was, it popped up in my, after, you know, your, your, what is it called? On YouTube, when you end your suggestions. And it was this, uh, video somebody did of one of the shows a couple of shows at Disney and oh my goodness the clarity of those fireworks and everything in that video in those videos fantastic I want to know what kind of camera he used but I guarantee you it wasn't only the camera I'm sure he did hours and hours and hours and hours of editing it's beautiful though like that is so crystal clear the color is perfect I mean it was like you were sitting there I was like, man. That's how I do it, Colin. I'll have it I'll have it up on the uh, on the TV and then I'll have it I'll be on my phone. But I also have the, the chat going on the TV. Like where I can read it. And then if I feel like I want to chime in on something, I'll chime in. Most of the time I'm here lately, I, th I think uh, I'm done chatting on some of these channels. I'm like, all right, you guys, you guys aren't very welcoming. <laughs> Even though I'm there every day, you'd think they'd be like, oh, hey, what's up? You know. Must have had to stay after school. He got he got uh, what is it? Detention. I almost said in school suspension. Man, I had a lot of that. I was a bad child. <laughs> Didn't do homework. Talked too much. I still talk too much. I don't think you guys care though. Thank goodness. People at my work, on the other hand, are like, hey, will you shut up? <laughs> I saw this one here a few weeks ago, I think, or Sunday. Did we see this one on Sunday? Maybe not. What's up? How you doing, bud?
you guys want to see another shot of them. Got Devin hanging out with us. Just finished up work over there on the ramp. Where is it? Got a star. I see a star. There it is. <laughs> oh, it's a little too bright now. Got to make changes to the camp. Hold on. There you go. See the craters there on the moon? I know how much you guys enjoy the moon shots. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Thank you guys. I'm glad you, glad you guys like that. I'm glad I'm able to be able to, to do that. I'm going to have to readjust the camera now because everything's going to be way too dark. Actually, that looks kind of nice. All dark like that, don't it? Can't leave it like that. I wonder how that would look if I zoomed in because I know this will change. Shoot, that actually looks better, don't it? Being down, being a little darker. All right, so we're an hour away from the MD-11 departure now. Huh? Yeah. I think that's gonna. I think that's what I'm gonna end with. Will be the MD-11 departure. Just because down here is so. Well, it's dark, but when. We got one. It's our other FedEx ATR. That's strange that they're both coming in on this side. It's a little bit too dark for that shot. There are those pesky lights on the right side of your screen there. They tend to be a little annoying. <laughs> the loud ATR inbound, yes. You can hear them all over the airport. It's insane. Like when they're taxiing around and stuff, you can hear them all over the place. I'm like, dude, calm down. You guys are so loud. they're doing over there what is that yeah. must be operations up to something another one over there looks like all right got another one coming 
See you guys, can you guys hear that? That ATR is way over here. Let's see, where is it? Is that it right there? That's an ATR. He's way out there. And it's so loud. <laughs> The electric ATR. I won't be doing a show tomorrow, but I do think I'll be here on Thursday. Possibly another show here. Just have to depend. It'll depend on how full the parking garage is. I again today, I didn't even try today to go over to the parking garage. I saw the sign from full, and I was like, ah, I'm not even gonna bother trying today. Plus, like again, I wanted to test out this equipment and see how long of a show we can do. And luckily, having the laptop, only the laptop plugged in. I haven't plugged the um, the camera into it. The camera's into a different little charge box. So if it dies, you're going to see pretty colors. But um, Which I can plug it into this box. But this new box, the big one I have, we've been on it for over an hour. The laptop is actually charging. And this is indicating that it hasn't lost any power at all so far so the charging hasn't the battery hasn't gone down which it should since it took it over eight hours to completely charge and it wasn't even empty aviation what's up Good evening. Welcome to tonight's weird show. I'm going to call it weird. What do you guys think? I mean, weird? It's different. It's definitely different. <laughs> Again, not in our normal location. And see, after dark, it's, it's a lot more difficult. I mean, you guys get the... Uh, pretty lights, of course. As long as you guys are enjoying the show, that's all that matters to me. Now he's finally going to calm down. He's going to shut down. You guys are going to be like... chilling over here. I can't tell. It's too dark. Too much light behind. A little E-175 sitting here. Lurking in the dark like a creeper. <laughs> Creeping. Well, thank you, Evan. I'm glad you guys you enjoy the show, sir. No, no specials today. I looked before I came in today and there will... We didn't have any. Sadly, Matt, man, I would love to give you more ATRs. Unfortunately, those are the only two ATRs we get here in RDU. <laughs> huh? Yeah, the the uh, the Grand Caravan, the ones for UPS. I will admit they do sound fantastic on takeoff and departure. 
Uh, Air France hasn't reached their peak time to become to come more often. Hopefully soon. And of course, if you guys notice, hold on, I'll zoom in on it. We do have. I think. I think this will probably be the last week. Right there in the center of your screen, American Airlines Triple Seven. Uh, I think it'll be the last week of it, not the one moving towards us, the one sitting at the gate. Um, I believe this will be the last week for it coming in at 6. I think it'll go back to 1.30 to 6 p.m. or 6.20, 6.30 p.m. here at RDU. It's usually the week of or the week after daylight savings they change change its flight times. They have absolutely no clue why they do that either. It's weird. You go from arriving here at 1.30 and leaving at 6, then in the winter you get here at 6 and leave at 9, 9.30. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why they do it. But it's funny, Air France won't change. Aviation, thank you for that update. Triple seven times so that. Well, it's not. Um, no, they can't. It's not. It has nothing to do with the triple seven. So the A350 won't fit in the gate that they currently occupy. That Air France currently occupies. The gate itself isn't wide enough. Even if there's no aircraft, it's. The, the A350 is 13 feet wider than, and I can't remember how many feet longer than the uh, 787 Dreamliner. So the Air France was like, well, we can't do this. It won't fit. And, uh, but the Americans, the American Airlines has been doing that for the last couple of years, changing, changing up their times. Every time time changes. 
it doesn't have anything to do with traffic. It's just the way they do it. I don't know what the difference is or why they do it, but... Yeah, they won't boot the 777. The 777's been here for years. But like I said, again, it has nothing to do with the 777. Thank you, William. Yeah, the 777 has nothing to do with Air France's decision. Now Air France could fly a 777-200 just like American does. I don't think they can fly the, the 787-10, dash 10, though. I think it's too big. It's too long for our gates. Now we do have, like I said, we do have one gate that the A350 will fit at, but RDU doesn't want to shuttle the Air France guests all the way around the airport on a bus. <laughs> Unfortunately, it can't. We don't. We only have one gate that will even fit a 777-300. Maybe two, but I think there's only one gate that'll fit a triple seven three hundred, one, and I think it's all the same gate. One that'll fit the A three fifty, and one that will fit. Actually, I think it's a different gate for a seven four seven. Because this airport wasn't built with big big aircraft in mind. It was built, you know, for the regional stuff. And now RDU's got to step up if they want to continue to get all of their big international traffic or get more international traffic in they need to uh, build some gates to fit some of these bigger aircraft which th they're working on you can google the uh, RDU 2040 project it's got pictures and layouts of everything like this spot right here where we're sitting right now will be I think this spot's supposed to be executive hangars maybe not this might be just a grass area when they get done with it but I know they're building a whole bunch of new private hangars out here toward this end and then they're moving the roads and not only are they moving you know Lumley Road and the, the runway they're moving a lot of things to expand the airport it's gonna take some time again you can google the 20 the RDU 2040 project we can take one we can get we can get one 747 at a gate if needed, if it was actually needed, but who's gonna land here? Like, what's up, Dino? How's it, how's it going? Um, it's on United's end, and I can't remember if it's on the back side or the front side of the terminal I think it's on the back side of the terminal but it's one of the one of the corner the corner gates and uh, that's pretty much how it's set up now the only the, the corner gates can currently fit anything bigger than you know a 767 or even a 767 so are you you know and what's funny is Lufthansa and the uh, and Air France are going to share the same gate. So if the, if anybody has a mishap, they're going to be in trouble. Yeah, it was much warmer here today, too. It was like 7, when well, my car said it was 78, but that was after it sitting outside all day. It was a very nice day today. I <laughs> I walked out, and I felt that it was about 72, and I just stopped right in the sunshine. And just I was like, I'm soaking the sunshine in. I don't even care at the moment. It's not even that busy. <laughs> tell him to make more gates. Well, they're working on it. They are slowly but surely working on it. 
They gotta get the runway project finished first. Well, hello, Jet Fleet. You're the only one with an A220. I don't even know where it's at. I don't know if it's close to it. Thank you guys for the making that like count go up. That is much appreciated. I know tonight, like I said, is a little different. When the airport's slow, it's a lot harder to be down here, obviously, because you guys are just watching whatever's happening over there. Which isn't much, doesn't look like. <laughs> I like that sound. <laughs> we haven't actually had a breeze today. No breeze airways today. Not since I've been here anyway. Ouch. Yeah, I, I don't... What is today? Tuesday? Yeah, it's it's light on Tuesday. It's Wednesday and Friday. They were pretty heavy. They were pretty heavy on Sunday, too. What's up, Tony? Good to see ya. Alright, Dino, have a good one. Thank you for hitting that like button. Much appreciated. Can't wait to catch you on the next one. Check us out on Sunday. We'll be back during the day on Sunday. Tomorrow, uh, Thursday, we'll, it'll be another night show. Not sure if I'll do it from here or if I'll risk trying to get to the parking garage. Either way, I'm going to charge all the equipment and make sure that we have all of the equipment charged and ready to go if we decide to do another another show from down here. Tony doesn't want to be a mod. <laughs> Not that he doesn't want to be a mod. Tony is very, very busy. To Tony... Tony is a mod, just not on the show. Tony is a big part of my team. Tony does a great job for me and the show behind the scenes. So he may not be a moderator to you guys, but he is to me. Where is that A220? I can't even see it. Hold on. We're going we're gonna to pan here. E-175 is supposed to just sit behind each other, maybe. I can't see anything. It's too dark. We all heard it. Where did it go? Just a wiener. Tony does a great job for us behind the scenes. Yeah, we're still we're still looking at mods and seeing who all's here. We we made a big pick on Sunday because we had we've been watching for a couple of weeks to see who all's here on the regular basis. And, and, uh, and stuff to that nature. I actually haven't seen John in a while. He is still on the mod team, but I haven't seen John in a while. And of course, we've been very sporadic with our shows over the last month and a half. We all know why. I mean, of course, but Time to start trying to ramp things back up. Five red eye destinations. Well, London's one of them. Because <laughs> to be red eye, it has to go, let's see, like west coast to east coast. 
can't go west to east. Or east to west. It'd be a red eye, I don't think. And of course, we do have Brianna in the chat every now and then. She's always watching. I'll be watching you. What was what was that movie, Monsters Inc.? <laughs> <laughs> always watching. <laughs> ah. There's our A220. Finally. Where have you been hiding? I couldn't even see the tail. <laughs> Gonna give us a another big see ya before you leave? Or are you spooled up there? Come on, come on. Give us a big see ya. audience. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, always trees, Tony. Always trees. Or do you. Cut down some of your trees. I, I don't. <laughs> not heading, not heading west, west to east. Oh, well, you got Air France, and of course we'll have Lufthansa in July. Iceland. Yeah, I forgot about Iceland. I always forget about Iceland, and I don't know why. Like, Iceland's one of my favorite ones, too, and I always forget about it. I do miss their old livery, though, over the toothpaste li livery. We'll have another one uh, as soon as summer gets here. We're going to have another Seattle flight, but it'll be early in the morning. It'll be from Alaska. I don't know that we'll be we'll uh we'll see that one. There we go, spot the leopard. I think that's the thing. Leave it. We caught this one arrive a little while ago. Turning burn? Will we have a turning burn? Maybe? Turn and simmer? Turn and boil. There we go. <laughs> and he's gone. To do some gardening. <laughs> yeah, I think they'll have them to RDU. The one from Seattle on in the summer in the morning is very, very early. I think it departs at like 8 a.m. I thought one day over the summer, I was like, man, this thing stayed overnight. Nope. It came in at like 7 a.m. and then left again at like 8 or 9, something like that. Yeah, Delta has one to Seattle. Um, SFO to and United, yep. Delta to LA, Breeze to San Diego this summer, Breeze to Vegas this summer. I can't remember if they got one to LA. Did they get that one to LA? Breeze, is that still? Did they drop that one? Okay. I couldn't remember. 
so they got we're gonna have quite a few West Coast flights. I would have liked to have done that on Breeze. Yeah. I think the only way that I'd fly Breeze is if it was on the A220. <laughs> Jet Blues aren't. I watched a video. Actually, hold that thought. I might hold on. It's in here somewhere. I forgot about it. I'm glad you mentioned it. <laughs> Are we allowed to talk about Bruno? No, no, we're not. <laughs> Give me a minute, you guys. Hold on. Sorry for all the extra all, right. all the extra movement there. I was hook, hooking up the other headset. I forgot I had this stupid thing in the car. But we got Devin Devin Mo. You saw him, you guys saw him earlier in the chat. What's Howdy. Up? I'm doing good. Good. I will return after these messages. Yeah, I was hooking <laughs> up the other headset. <laughs> Trying to figure that out when it's completely dark is Kind of a pain. I got a light floating around in here too somewhere. Don't even know where it's at. Don't want to make the mistake of putting my phone up here as a as a, a light again. I broke it the last time I did that. Dropped it and it landed right here on the back bumper of the car. So bad. Dope. All right, we, and we are about 30 minutes away from our MD-11 departure. We might, depending on how the MD-11 looks, we might stay for the 777 departure. Depending on what you guys think. We will see about staying for the American Airlines 777 departure. I am not acting as a security guard. <laughs> as Yeah, security. <laughs> there are people around here. There's a car behind us. And I'm like, I'm always weary. Especially doing my shows here. Because it is so dark. Like, you guys don't understand. There's no light, period, anywhere. And they're looking at the screens can make my eyes do weird things. And then it's like, I can't see people behind me. It freaks me out. It's the other reason why I don't really like doing this show at night down here. 
<laughs> I don't know what's worse, having a strobe light in your eyes while you're parking a 737 or being in the dark out here. <laughs> so why don't you tell us what you do? I we I think I think you've been on here and a lot of people know that that you work here at the airport. So what what uh, what all does your job entail? And yeah, I've who been you work at a few times. Um, work for Avail Airlines. I think everybody knows uh, our growing company by now, at least in the Raleigh Durham area. So I'm just one of their ramp agents. I typically work maybe five, six times a week. It's a really nice gig. Have some really nice folks in the flight deck as our captain first officers. It's a great flight attendant. So give them a shot. Nice people. Very nice. I actually wouldn't mind flying with them. I love their deliveries too. That's part of what attracts me to them. Oh, oh yeah. I, did you know they're called wishbones? Do they really? Are yeah, they really? that's what it's called. Yeah, they're wishbones. Huh. I can see that now. Now that now that you said that, I can see that being three wishbones on there. Huh. It took me four months of working with the company to find out that's what that was. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Bruno walks walks in with a mischievous grin. <laughs> oh, all right. See, Molly with the bad news. Triple Seven doesn't depart till ten thirty. Actually, you know what, Molly? I think that's wrong because it said it wasn't going to be here until seven twenty tonight, and it showed up at six fifteen. Who knows? I do know one thing. The maintenance guys hate that plane. <laughs> yeah, it's always broken. <laughs> yeah, I get on the bus with them, and they're like, oh, yeah, it's stuck overnight again. <laughs> They'll be leaving at 7 o'clock in the morning. Speaking of that, did you know that, that is where it sits, where they put it, is the only place that it will fit? Oh, yeah, there's only one gate for it in the new Ron pad. Yeah. So when uh, Air France was sitting there, it was kind of like, don't break it. Yeah, let's not break the triple seven please i know it was broke down so many times last year <laughs> but it was great me and tony got a bunch of pictures i think we all got a bunch of good pictures of it um last year as much as it was sitting out there yeah the charlotte guys are on standby whenever that thing breaks down oh i'm sure i'm i'm sure they gotta fly one in and get yeah well last time it was dallas who flew one in was it yeah i think one day they flew in it wasn't because one was broken down, but we had one come in from Miami one day, and they dropped off some people, and then it took off before London Heathrow flight came in. I was like, that was weird. Maybe there was one that was broken. I don't remember, but there was like three of them in one day, two or three. I actually can't wait for this Albany flight that Avelo is doing. It should be a lot of fun. Yeah, that would be nice. I'd, I'd like to see that. Again, like we were talking about a minute ago, I, I'm ready to see, like, the the breeze from San Diego and, and all the other ones that they're bringing in. But, you know, topic of discussion is definitely Lufthansa. I think everybody's ready for Lufthansa. We've been waiting our turn. I know. I was really... Well, what do you think of uh, Aeromexico's decision to bring... 75. You know what? Actually, too, I don't think that that's going to be a um, like a celebration, like a like a party and all that stuff. Because I think it's just a what one of my guys said is it's just basically re starting that flight. It was already there at one time with them, but I could be wrong. But so he was like, he was like, yeah, I don't know if they're going to do like the whole party thing that and the other since it's basically just a continuation of the flight from years ago I was disappointed that they brought the U-175 but I think it's only fair I mean we've been flying to Canada for decades now we still don't have anything bigger than the E-175 <sighs> so annoying we had the A220 over that one summer post-COVID which was amazing and then it never came back yeah I wasn't out here then either I would love to have seen that I mean we had the A320 uh, or A319 I think it was the A320 on Sunday, but that was for the hockey team. Yeah, the hockey team's charter, uh, the last of the Air Canada 320s. They got rid of all the rest of them. We had that. We had the all black one here one time. We did. And it, I got it on the show. Unfortunately, it was dark. <laughs> yeah, it's been chartering the Winnipeg Jets around most of the season, and also brought down Buffalo for uh, their game against Carolina. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Are you guys like Brunoing it up in the chat? I thought we don't talk about that guy. We don't talk about Bruno. What are you guys doing? You guys are going to 
breaking all the rules. <laughs> you guys are gonna get in trouble. <laughs> I'd call RDU ops on you guys. Yeah, exactly. Ops, we got people talking about Bruno. <laughs> it's not allowed. That was actually the funny thing uh, this morning. Ops came behind uh, our jet while we were about to push and just started taking photos. I was like, hey, guys, uh, we're about to push. Do you <laughs> mind, like, not parking there? <laughs> Can you move, please? <laughs> Get out of my way. I think they're just promo shots for the Albany route, but Probably. I think that's cool, though. Probably. Yeah, I, I am. I'm excited about all the different things going on this summer. And what about Copa? Copa was not on my radar, to be completely honest. We'll Everybody see. had their eyes set on Aer Lingus for the longest. Well, see, I, again, I knew I knew that about a week beforehand, too. But I didn't know specifically which airline. I just knew it wasn't going to be Aer Lingus. And I, I wasn't allowed, I couldn't say anything. I was like, it's killing me. He was like, yeah, I expect it to be somebody from the south. And I'm like, who the heck is... Azul? So, yeah, that, that was like one of my thoughts. And then a week later, they're like, oh, it's Copa. And I was like, oh, man, it's United's Spanish cousin. Come on. <laughs> Bringing another 737. Right when we thought got rid of the Continental. Yeah. Came back. <laughs> Continental makes the return. To be fair, though, they can't bring anything smaller than a Max anyway. It's not going to reach. Yeah. Yeah, it won't. I'd be willing to try Copa, though. Yeah. yeah. And I noticed, I saw on, on online they are offering a bunch of destinations. Oh, yeah. And, it, like, from here, like, I think they're going to multiple cities from here, not just, like, Panama City and um, one of those. Oh, look, I can't even get away from them. I work with you all day, Lexus. <laughs> <laughs> I'd know those taillights anywhere. My airplane's all tucked in bed. I can stay away from you guys. <laughs> it's like, I don't need to touch you. You're asleep. I'm hoping we uh, pull off some sort of Midwest route from here at some point. There, there's some good options out there. Yeah, other than Dallas and Chicago. Uh, we're not doing that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's a little disappointing, at least personally, that we're still only serving uh, Florida and basically the northeast yeah I feel like maybe a pittsburgh I feel like just try to make yep. american try you know now they're broken up right like i know they have some on the west coast that they do the whole west coast thing and where they do meet in the middle and then fly out instead of having direct flights out here so yeah we have a west coast fleet and an east coast fleet and uh while we have two airports now that connect in the middle they're not actually uh transfer hubs so we, we still don't do transfers uh, we're not sure what we're trying to do uh, with that at this point. We're trying to still create our brand and be more solid where we're standing. Yeah. But uh, what we end up doing in order to switch planes around is we'll typically have a charter system. So a plane, like uh, this morning, we had a plane charter out for uh, Duke's men basketball. Okay. And they're going to go up to Dulles, and they'll fly out from there elsewhere, wherever they're needed. So like, let's say uh, our base in Burbank needs a plane. We'll have a charter that kind of works out going out west, and then it'll continue on to Burbank. Oh, okay. I, I knew it was something weird. Like, they they stayed mostly primarily on the west and then east. And they didn't really go cross-country. Like Hartford... I think it, what is it, Hartford, Connecticut, where they fly to? New Haven. New Haven, that's it. That's they're, gotta be. They're close, but that's, not quite. That's, I looked at that one day and I was like, ah, is New Haven even big? And it's like, they don't even have a terminal, it doesn't look like. <laughs> the airport has a arrival terminal and a departure terminal. It's they're so, not the same. It's so small, it's insane. They have one jet route that doesn't work <laughs> because America stopped using it before COVID and then they let it rust. Oh, great. So it's our, it was broken before we got there as an airline. We just kind of went without it. We have five ground gates in New Haven. Uh -huh. And they're typically for our 700s, but we do have an 800 doing flights to Puerto Rico. What's up, Scott? Long time no see. Hope you're doing well, sir. Hello, Scott. Um, Copa. 
Evan. See, you guys are going to curse my show because you guys are talking about Bruno. Ah, it looks like the national flight's finally ready to leave. <laughs> I wonder if there was a ground stoppage for some reason. I don't know. He sat there for a long time, though. It is Washington, D.C., after all. <laughs> I know. It's not like they have that much traffic. It could be Atlanta. <laughs> Well, that was kind of our thought, but, you know, a lot of people were disappointed that we didn't get Aer Lingus. I actually have a decent amount of friends from college who uh, have family in Panama, unironically, so there's actually like a, a weird, very quiet market for Panama and surrounding uh, right. Central Americas. Right, because we didn't even know, we didn't even have them on radar. We didn't have Copa, nobody even thought of that. Now, then my friend's like, oh yeah, it's somebody south of the border, and I'm like, what? <laughs> like, uh, I get to see what Spirit does all the time. There are a bunch of people who fly to Guatemala out of Spirit's gates all the time. Like, the flights to Fort Lauderdale, right? Oh, yeah. And when I see the bags drop, none of them say Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> nope. They say Guatemala City or Panama. And it's like, ah, cool. So it's kind of a stopover for you guys. Well, the other thing, too, is like, um, I noticed, too, we've got a lot of flights. Spirit, or uh, Frontier does one to Puerto Rico. JetBlue right. does one to Puerto Rico, right? And then we've got Bahamas. You know, we've got all these nice destinations in 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 place, but they need to really work on the Europe European market. But I guess that's only if the airlines are interested in coming here and whether or not we can make the space for them or not. Well, what I think happened is that uh, people are just tired of them connecting in Florida. Miami's getting busier by the day. A lot of the Florida airports, minus the weather being a problem, just are getting really packed. Yeah. So oh, yeah. if an airline can offer that straight up skip and they know that there's an airport that actually has that kind of demand, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And RDU, unironically, is one of those airports. Delta flies so many routes to Florida. Avalo flies so many routes to Florida. Yep. Uh, Frontier, Southwest. Spirit, everyone flies to Florida from here. I think uh, JetBlue either added one or just changed the plane because I noticed it coming up it's the a220 from here to orlando yep a couple times so i don't know if that's a new flight we've ad they've added or what but i'm excited about that i want to take that flight i like the a220 and i want to go to orlando yeah outside of orlando it's honestly very quietly subtle how many people are flying to florida to transfer to a caribbean or central american destination oh that i i, I definitely could believe that in like fort lauderdale and they fly in a lot of the smaller planes like the you know, they got the, the ATRs and stuff. They fly in there, in, even in Miami and stuff, to fly mm -hmm. to the Caribbean destinations. Because, you know, they can't, not all of those Caribbean destinations can fly in 737s or, you know, something of that size. I was wondering if Spirit flew in today. I, I was sitting in my break room wondering why I hadn't seen them yet. They're arriving right now. Really? Yeah. That's weird. That's really late. They flew in at noon for the past three weeks. And they're now showing up at uh, 9 o'clock. What's the least popular flight anywhere north other than Canada? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think my brother-in-law did that flight. They tried to get me to do it, and I was like, uh, no. Because Delta and American both did that, and they both pulled out. And I think American just got back on it. I can't even remember who he flew with. Is that? <laughs> do I hear the MD-11? Probably not. Not for another two minutes. But Maybe. I can't see anything over there. It's dark. There is an Endeavor over there, but I don't see anybody else. I, I, I got it on camera. It's lit up, but he's not moving yet. I, I don't think it's pushed back yet. Stupid trees are in the way. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to see SAS. I love that livery, but yeah, they're, they're in so much... Um, money trouble <laughs> I don't think that would happen or at least they were over the summer they were having they were having issues with it but it is it is Scott Devin is hanging out with us here this evening oh question as a moderator of the RDU plane spotting group will you be joining us on the 30th for our grand 
Spotting day. What day is the 30th? I believe it is a Saturday. I'll have to look and see, check on the schedule. Saturdays are one of those days that I treat like a work day. Plus, I do work every few Saturdays. Um, but I will, I'll do my best to come hang out with you guys. I appreciate for sure. that. For sure. Uh, here's Spirit off my left. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know that. if I can get that or yeah. not. It's too dark. It is delayed three hours. That'll explain oh, that why. explains why. I might yeah. be able to get it here in a second. I put myself in kind of a precarious spot with keeping my stuff so close. The car. There it is. Flying Potassium. Spirit Airline. So much stuff in the way. And she's gone. <laughs> gone. Hiding. All right, where's our MDLF? I know you're over there. That's FedEx. Too far. Yeah, I don't mind not sharing uh, a ramp with him for a day. <laughs> <laughs> right? All right, so we got a couple there. Again, so I wonder. Oh, here we go. See? You can't talk about Bruno. Uh, I don't know if uh, reaches milestone in Chapter 11 process and prepares for a busy summer season. Well, you know what? More power to him. I do love SAS A350 livery. Like, that is probably one of the most stunning planes, in my opinion. And uh, I, had a, I created a great debate over on LA flights about that one day. <laughs> I was like, I love that livery, probably the best one. They were like, uh, what about Ita? I'm like, yeah, that's nice, but I like the, the silver and the blue better. Ita's grown on me. I'll, I'll give him credit for that. The first time I saw it, it did kind of bothered me. I was still used to Alitalia. Yeah. It's better than Condor and their candy canes oh, or where is Waldo look. Don't even get me started on the uh, <laughs> stripes. Now, I, I wouldn't mind seeing the red. I think the red might be okay. Unfortunately, it won't ever fly here to the United States. Yeah. And the blue is okay. But that sand or whatever it's called, and then the green, ugh, no. The blue I do kind of like, but the other colors, no. What if it was peppermint green? Yeah, then we'd look like a, a peppermint uh, candy cane. So I think it would be interesting to see uh, see the red one come in. <laughs> Seeing the pips like Team Stripes. Condor Brown. <laughs> now, I love the old Condor livery with the yellow the yellow and the gray and the white. Man, that, that was a, a good-looking livery, along with Iceland's old livery. Iceland's old livery with the yellow engines was was really nice. Oh, did you see the blank one before uh, they got it repainted? Yes, it was hilarious. <laughs> I think I have a picture of that somewhere. I, didn't, I don't think I posted it anywhere, but I think I have a picture of it. I got a few pictures of it as well. As well. It was so funny. I was like, ooh, this plane's naked. I got a picture of its old one before they painted that one, too. Now, I, uh, <laughs> now I don't know if you watch the show when it comes in, and I'm like, especially when it's in the mint tail. Yeah, and I'm like, oh look, the tube of toothpaste is here, because that's exactly what it looks like—an old school <laughs> tube of toothpaste. Evelyn, how are you doing this evening? I don't wonder if I should risk staying until 9:30 to find out if the triple seven is going to leave. Because then it goes in one world. I would. <laughs> I didn't even notice that it was in one world. It's not one world. I would not stay. <laughs> yeah. I wish Air France would bring something cool. They have specials. I've never looked. They have specials, just not on the 7.8s. Which figures. They're on the 350s. Of course. That's what the, uh, uh, was it this year? The Olympics, yes. The Olympics, The Olympics yeah. is on the, the 350. When I first started doing, before I really got into this, Scott and I, I was in, uh, I was in, uh, what you call it, 
DC and uh, I was doing a, a test show up there and uh, we got the Air France 777-300 man that thing was fantastic and he was right up next to us too 19 center and he was taxiing right there too just behind the FedEx terminal my light I can't see Someone's starting in this. So we've only lost one. One bar of power. Amazing. On this whole thing. Since we started this show three hours ago. Almost, almost three hours. Yeah, three hours and five minutes ago. All right, why are you not? There we go. And we just now, after three hours, just now had to plug in our our hot spot. So we could do a pretty long show with our equipment here. And we still haven't had to plug in the camera yet. The only thing I've had to plug in, I have to make sure the laptop's plugged in because if I don't and it gets too low, it one minute it says charging, not charging, and then it, it will die. But this time it's actually charging. Weird. Is that our MD? There's our MP11. Just on the other side of that CRV. It's time for Endeavor to make their bread. Oh, their planes are coming home from the roost. Yeah. Did you see that rejected takeoff toward the beginning of the show? That CRJ. I was busy working my own flight at a punch, unfortunately. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were still working or not. Yeah, I was still working at the time. He started to go, and then all of a sudden he was like, nope, stay in here. See any of it. Did you work on Sunday? Uh, I do work on Sundays. Man, Sunday was fantastic. Air Canada went around twice. Southwest went around once. And they were just fighting that wind so hard on Sunday. It was you great. should have seen 2-3 left. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> there was a student pilot trying to fly in with ATP oh, and we had like half the southwest ramp waiting for our planes, their planes coming. We had us out there waiting for our plane to come in and dude like was like maybe 10 feet from wing strike in that thing. Ugh. Just completely 45 degree knife edge. <laughs> and everyone was like, oh no! <laughs> we had a couple over here, and I'm like, dude, somebody get me some toilet paper. I'm standing over here, and I... Oh, I you're did, scared, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, Air Canada touched, left wheels in the back, and then he was like, nope, I'm out of here. Left out. There's only two go-arounds. Well, three if you count both of Air Canada's go-arounds. There's only three go-arounds. No, four. I take that back. We had a Delta one late in the day. Yeah, the very next day I had a, a flight training flight, and it was equally as bad for half of it. And we, <laughs> we just we just planted it. We didn't care about floating the runway to smoothly do it. Like, no, we just put it down. <laughs> it's like, just get me down. It's near its inspection anyway. Put it on the ground. Eh, <laughs> yeah, she's moving. Yeah, she is. Thought I saw something. The frail old girl. <laughs> Do you call them real? That thing's a beast. Exactly. It's probably got another 30 years in it. Last of the McDonald Jets holding strong. And I'm really, really sad they're going to uh, retire all of them. Yeah, the 748 makes a great replacement, though. It's got the car capacity without all the tail heavy issues. Really, Delta connection? Really? You wait for the MD-11 to move, and then you start moving, you little manis. Move it. Like I said, it's time for Endeavor to make their bread. Yeah. <laughs> time to go home. I watch those guys park like maybe eight, nine planes a night. It's insane. You ever watch uh, You ever watch Flight Radar Yeah. Uh, during the day or at night? Watch Memphis? Oh, yeah. You All talking, of a about, everything it, talking about bees moves. to a hive? Yeah. They're just like... <laughs> it's hilarious to watch them. Nice two-for-one shot here with the MD-11 and the little CRJ Delta Connection. Just to remind, I think we'll stay till 9.30 and see. We're going to see if American Airlines moves. It did come in an hour early. I think the times on flight radar are mixed up. So we're going to 
we're gonna attempt it and see. As a matter of fact, is it already moving? CRJ, your tail is in my way. Oh no, there it is. She's still sitting there. And of course, the MD-11 is gonna go hide behind. over there. If plane spotting was a sport, he'd be the analyst, I'd be a color commentator. <laughs> <laughs> I do love giving play by play play by plays for the most part. Some days I'm just like, you guys enjoy the planes. I'm just here to bring them to you. Like right now, I'm not even using flight radar. Of course, there's not enough traffic for me to be like, oh, flight radar. Uh, you know. So I'm like, whatever flies over, flies over. I got a moderator in here who's really good at that. <laughs> she does a great job. Hey, Rip Hastings, uh, just keep an eye out at RDU stuff. Everything opens and closes so very fast. Someone's always leaving or being promoted or uh, handed the pink slip and demoted to passenger, but. There are always openings. See, Pip, I told you. you gotta, gotta stay on it, sir. I found my job with the Velo very randomly. I applied to Envoy, uh, Velo, and uh, Spirit of the Time. And uh, Velo's only want to get back, and then not so long after, United exploded and showed up, so. <laughs> yeah. Probably a toad. My chattel like that. Is that a toad, Molly? <laughs> Carolyn and Barry aren't watching, are they? It's Harper, the American alligator. Is it really? It is an alligator. I've never seen that one. It might be one of the newer tales. I think it is, actually. Too bad it had to come in the dark. <laughs> Unfortunately so, yeah. <laughs> Darn this darkness. Hey, look, Tony's excited. He knows what it's all about. <laughs> Thank you, Matt, man. <laughs> that is much appreciated. I try to make it fun, as fun as, as I can for you guys. But you know what? It goes both ways. You guys make it fun for me, so... can't see it. It's too far away. Alright, are you going to move sometime? Thank you. So the MD-11 can get a move on. Come on. Get out of here. Shoot. Nobody likes you, CRJ. <laughs> nope. MD-11 is next up after the Mantis here. Matter of fact, I don't even care about the menace. Where are you at? There you are. Hello, beautiful. Uh oh, what happened? Hold on, bear with me. I have no idea what, are, are you good? Are you, are we good? Are we, are we settled? No. Thing freaked out. Of course, right as the uh, MD-11's getting ready to park. I wonder if those have the, the block on them. Because I know getting too close to some of them will cause that to happen. little technical issue there. It was like a bit rate issue? Yeah. Uh -huh. It like bottomed out. It went all the way down to zero. 
First time it's moved all night. It's been solid at 10. Must be military cargo. I don't know. When we went to D.C., I had that problem quite often. Lufthansa 747 come in, and my stuff went nuts. <laughs> I was like, what? No, you're ruining it. I guess I was too close or something. Anyway, hopefully everybody's back, kind of. I don't know what's happening. Why are you doing that? I have full service, too. Nothing's changed. And I changed the bitrate down, so maybe it will. It's going to continue to do it for me. Yeah, I've got full, full 5D, full, 4 bars, 5D ultra wide. What is the problem? I hope, the 80s. Hopefully, hopefully you guys were able to see that. I know my service just bottomed out for no reason and is continuing to do it. Still have plenty of data left. We've got four bars ultra wide. I don't know what's going on. So maybe that's our sign to end it with the uh, MP11. We'll see. I want to see behind JetBlue here. Yeah, it's... My software is indicating that it's skipping like nobody's business. I really can't tell over on that. Yeah, I see it on the YouTube thing over there. There's no reason for it to be skipping now. It's weird. Yeah, London says 10.30 on my end. Yeah, it's like I was saying, it was saying 7.20 today, and it showed up at its normal 6.20. So I don't know, I don't know why. Call it daylight saving. See. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I think flight radar goofed up. Because it was like that the other night, too, I think. Or no, it actually did come in at 7.20. But again, it won't be long before they change it around anyway. I don't know why we're skipping that. 6,600 feet per minute. That's what Brad said. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, Daryl's got to feel it flying over the hotel. <laughs> Big Max. <laughs> oh, Matt, man, that's awesome. MD 11s and Big Mac sauce. <laughs> yeah, I know, William. I don't know what's. I don't know what's going on. Give it a minute. We're gonna ride it out and see what happens. See if it stabilizes. There's no reason for it to be doing it. So unless one of these planes are messing with it, because we had that problem back when we did our Thanksgiving Day show. Yeah, man, these new planes, uh, I've got a button now. They can stop all the streams around the world. It's crazy. They can jam it all up, mess it up. See, now it looks like it's fine. It's holding steady. Now that it, the MD's out of here, I don't know. We'll see. I'll give it a minute. I'm not going to trust it. I knew as soon as I trusted it, though, something happened. It always does. holding at 51 so after, that was after I turned it down wait wait what am I missing here is that I guess that's still the triple seven so. that looks really far away from the gate is that what the heck where'd it go
That's the run pad. Yeah, and then you go over here to the corner of the terminal. Yeah, it's right there. Doesn't that look far from it? Maybe I get, maybe not. Maybe they just the angle it's parked. Yeah. They do park it at a jaunty angle compared to how you normally would anything else. All right, so we're going to give this one another 10 minutes. So we're going to see what happens here. Looks like our service is stabilized. I don't know. What a weird blip. So we're going to see if the 777 pushes. These are the ones I was talking about being annoying. They must have them turned down tonight or something. I don't know. How about that? One more moonshot. Yeah, it stopped. I don't know what I don't know what the deal was with that. I'm gonna bump the setting back up and see what happened. That we were sitting very, very perfect the entire show until that one itty bitty little blip. It's like it knew. Yeah, MD11 rolls out the one mo important thing of the night. It's like, oh, let's just not do what we're supposed to. Yeah, it's back to normal. It's not going up or down. It's steady. Stupid thing. Hopefully everybody has enjoyed tonight's show. I know it's been hard being in this spot. I know everybody here watching has said they've enjoyed this spot. I enjoy this spot for spotting. I don't know about doing shows, but definitely for spotting it is one of my favorites. I appreciate it being allowed to be here. Oh yeah, no problem. I told you back in the back when I first started this. As soon as I got another headset, and then I almost forgot. Because <laughs> most of the time I'll be like, "Hey, anybody want to be on the show?" And they're like, "No, no, no, no." And then I'm like, "All right." So then I forget to ask the next few people. I'm like, "All right, all right." <laughs> Blick, what's up? All right, we're going to wait and see if the 777 moves. If not by 9.30, I'm going to call it an evening. I'm going to go home. I'm going to eat some food and get ready to start my day tomorrow. I got the next two days off, so I'm going to go home, go to sleep, and I'll take car into maintenance whenever I wake up. <laughs> Don't bring it to me. I have enough to do. <laughs> You know what, what specifically? <laughs> we, we were so busy today. Man, I, was, I thought I was going to be late to do the show because here I am rolling a car in at 440, 445. I was like, you know what? This car can wait until tomorrow. Because it was, they brought it in at 2 and wanted it at 5. And we were already so busy that they knew it wasn't going to happen. So I brought it in, racked it. It'll be the first car I do at 7 o'clock in the morning. People treat you guys like a car dealership? Yeah, on the service side of it, but we are a car dealership. <laughs> but. That's the beauty of an appointment, though, is that it's planned and you know when uh, you can go and we, try to set it up properly. We have walk ins all the time. I know. 445, got an oil change. Uh, oh. The heck I do. I got 15 minutes to change clothes and walk out that door. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and see, we don't, it's not like. You know, Honda or some of the Toyota dealerships where they have people that stay until 6 or 7. 5 o'clock rolls around, we're done. It's over. Yeah. I mean, we'll have, we'll have a couple people that'll be like, all right, I'll stay late. They make a little extra money, but 
staying a minute over 5 p.m. for an oil change, in my opinion. I don't get paid enough for that. <laughs> Changing oil is not that hard. It's like number one life skill. Yeah, I mean, you can change the oil in five minutes, but still. I almost wish when they built our new shop that they would have put in a, uh, what are those things called? Like the, uh, uh, the pit. Yeah, pits is what they call it. Yeah, yeah. Put in a nice pit so when we got those 430 oil change only, so we just roll it in over the pit, hit it, crack it, fill it, out. <laughs> Thank you, Brian Lloyd. We'll do. Glad you guys enjoyed the show. Again, we're gonna wait. We're gonna wait five more minutes. I wanna see. Be my luck. I'll end the show and it'll start moving. It's usually the way it goes. That would say it when you watch trains. Whenever trains aren't showing up, go get something to eat. They'll show yeah, up. They'll show up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like really. It's funny though. Two trains are so much harder to track. <laughs> it's like they don't have train radar <laughs> like we do yeah. for flight radar it's, it's like, only oh. faster services because people are already there so you can't hide anything yeah it's like it's like oh there's these cool planes coming in i'm going to the airport oh there's a cool train coming uh, i don't know when yeah when? trains are word of mouth bro <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> half the time i just pull up the lawn chair by some railroad tracks and we're safe and i just wait now when i lived in the mountains i was growing up we had the uh, Great Smoky Mountain Railway right uh, near my house. Oh, it's going to get loud. <laughs> so we had the uh, Great Smoky Mountains Railway. And uh, growing up, I used to, I lived close to it. So I'd run down the road. I'd hear the steam engine coming. I'm like, all right, I'm going to check this out. Like every time it would go by, it'd go by like four times a day. <laughs> I used to love going down there and checking that thing out. Yeah, it's one of the old uh, Southern Railway lines. Uh, used to go to the mountains way back when. My maintenance required light turned on earlier today. <laughs> well, you better go have that checked out, William. You mean your wallet's going to feel a little lighter after tomorrow light came on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least, as long as it's not the, the little engine, you're okay. If it's just the maintenance, it's just an oil change or a rotate or something like that. But if you get the little engine, you're in trouble. It's going to get expensive. <laughs> but ironically, though, uh, I had remembered something. I saw that the joke you made earlier. Is that uh, there's a video game out now on Steam called Railroader, which is actually based off of that old line. So really? Through Bryson City and all oh, of that. Yeah. That's Bryson, it, yeah. Bryson City and Silva. That's my hometowns. It's uh, set the transition era of steam to diesel. So oh, dude. I might have to look into that. It runs the route perfectly. You can play with your friends on multiplayer. Or you can play solo and build the railroad from scratch. Either way, it's a lot of fun. I might have, I might have to check that out because that that's, that's where I'm from. My hometown is Silva. I felt really proud to hear that there was a game dedicated to North Carolina and its mountains. Yeah, <laughs> right? Rockstar. We need a GTA. GTA it, Appalachia. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my. <laughs> that would be the funniest game ever. Oh, my God. Go from, like, Pigeon Forge, Cherokee, Bryson City, Silva, Murphy, and all the way over to, like, Asheville or whatever. Dude, um, it could be, like, Red Dead style set in, like, a moonshine period, bro. <laughs> They'd have all kinds of hillbillies running around and stuff. It'd be oh, hilarious. It. Yeah, it's like a Red Dead, but set up in, in the Appalachia. It would be so funny. Looks like the FOD truck just got off. I haven't gotten the special livery yet. I don't know that we're actually going to be able to see it. It's a very small sticker, maybe the size of like a it's car. It's like right under the window, right? Or is it bigger than that? It's like the size of like half a car. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like the left side of the cargo door. Yeah, I don't know that we'll be able to see it due to the fact that it is so dark, unfortunately. I saw it one time. It's hard to see from even over here during the daylight. I do have one flying over there.
Ah, let's see. I need to keep an eye on FedEx. Whoops. FedEx will light up, but not for another few minutes, though, I don't think. Always, it feels like we're always waiting on FedEx. FedEx is always the last plane in the show, usually. But at least now we'll know when they're leaving, if we stay long enough. I want to see. Come on, push back. I don't think it's going to, though. See any lights near the triple seven? Yeah, we'll be down a person on uh, on Thursday for a little while. I think Molly has to work late. Nieces, in second recall. It's Honda it's no, it's not a Honda issue. It's a uh, manufacturer of the parts issue, and it, it makes it look like it's Honda's fault. Kind of like you know the whole Takata airbag thing. Yeah, Honda caught a whole lot of heat for that, but Takata was the one that screwed all that up, and made crappy parts. <laughs> so that's yeah, it's it's. It's a touchy subject, and all cars have recalls now. It, it's so commonplace, whether it be especially software updates. You'd be surprised how many software updates we do every day to make the cars run better or whatever. Whatever it is. Certain ones are bigger than others. Some are tiny. Like one, something to do with parking sensors one time because the car would go in a car wash. You'd put it in neutral, and the car would automatically slam on the brakes and it would sit there until you physically back the car back out and away from brushes and stuff. So it's just weird stuff like that. As far as Honda losing their reliability, absolutely not, in my opinion. Hurricanes fall one nothing to the Rangers. Always says, get your hand in your pocket. <laughs> Yeah, we, I watched a video the other day, and they were like, uh, what brands would you stay away from? And these guys, and, and which I agree, I'm not hating on anybody, but I, I agree, being that I've been in this industry for the last 11 years. And they're like, what cars did you stay away from? And they're like, anything Mopar and Ford. Because <laughs> Ford, I think, I, I don't even know how many recalls they had last year, but it was a lot. Fix or repair daily. And of course, Mopar and Dot Jeep has this weird thing where like it's shifting into park while you're in the middle of traffic. I'm like what? Or it'll do something else that's weird. I don't know. Do we have beacons on the triple seven? Or is that on something else? That's on something else a little farther. Landing now, yep. See, you couldn't even see it. <laughs> yeah, anything Honda, Toyota, still the most reliable two manufacturers you can get. All right, let's check on it one more time. I hate to make you guys sit here and wait for the uh, FedEx departure at 10 o'clock unless you guys are absolutely adamant about staying for the FedEx departure at 10. But Oh, it landed at 9.17. Oh, yeah, I missed it. I yeah, we, it. we missed it. I mean, we filmed it coming in, but it was so small we didn't get a chance. We didn't see it. What's up, Captain John? Yeah, Pip Pip is in here somewhere. 
Honda oil dilution. No, well, it, all cars have gone down to like zero twenty. My, uh, I find it weird that my uh, my Type R runs zero twenty, and it runs a lot of it too. It runs like almost six quarts, which is a lot for a four cylinder. But it's very, and then you've got some of our new stuff at Lexus. It runs like zero sixteen W thirty or sixteen thirty, or si zero. <laughs> Dang it, I can't talk. Zero sixteen weight, which is basically like pouring water into it, which is fine. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything. It's engineered to to run on such thin oil. It's just, and it's it all comes down to fuel savings is what it what that really boils down to. What always annoys me right now is about the situation like this. You can see the APUs running by all the haze mm -hmm. coming off the tail. But there's just no beacon, so you don't know if the door is shut or what, what's going on with boarding. I can't see anything. I don't see any ULDs out there being loaded up, so I know the cargo door is shut. So it's just a matter of, are they done yet? Yeah, are they ready to move? That's the thing about these international flights. They can leave late until arrive on time somewhere, and it doesn't bother anybody but the people waiting for the departure. Yeah, especially flying, what, west to, to east. West to east. The jet stream has been very nice the past few weeks and very strong. They make up an hour easy. <laughs> and save all that extra fuel. Yeah, I did my short stint, my short three-month stint at Honda. Honda does things very, very weird. And I, I just, I didn't like it. So I left Honda and went back to Lexus. Just the way they, the way they do the maintenance. Not what they do, just the way they do it was weird and I didn't care for it. Lexus is just a luxury Toyota. Yep, pretty much. Oh, we're skipping again. Maybe that means a triple seven sleep. <laughs> Maybe. Or it's like, hey, time to go home. Time to leave. Yeah, they, uh, Toyota definitely, Lexus and Toyota are definitely the same. Just, you ride in one, you know the difference, though, because... Suspension is, for suspension one, is different. different. The, the sound deadening is way different. You get in, like, a RAV4, and it's loud going down the road, and you, then you get into an NX, and you're like, wow. <laughs> I don't hear any of this road noise. It's great. I forget what the equivalent is for the Camry to Lexus, but I've, I've, I think I've driven one of them one time. The uh, the ES. Yeah. It's it's completely silent. It, it rides so smooth. And it You can feel the cushion and the suspension mm -hmm. if you take a harder turn than you should. Mm -hmm. Whereas you drive a Camry, like I drive a uh, SE, so technically it's a Sport Edition, and you take a turn hard, and that thing just rocks like it, it's it's <laughs> solid it's not going anywhere yep <laughs> they're a lot different well, there's a lot of weight too there's well, more weight yeah more weight in the lexus with all the sound deadening the, the suspensions were f tuned a little different like the springs are different i love all the small little intricacies but you know under the under that hood it's the same motor it's and the same <laughs> chassis <laughs> yeah you if you were to open it take the front bumper off of one versus the other you couldn't tell the difference no like the RAV4 and the uh, Camry both use the same engine. So. Mm -hmm. And that's just the Camry model, the Toyota models. Then the uh, the Lexus RX, the Camry, the Highlander, they all use the V6. Well, they used to. We don't have anything V6 anymore no. other than the twin turbo stuff. What about the GR86? What's your opinion on that? Yeah, it's a Subaru. I like them. All right, don't get me wrong, but it's Subaru. <laughs> There's somebody literally sitting at the end of the line going, that one's a Subaru, that one's a Toyota, that one's a Subaru. It's hilarious. But they made a deal like Subaru or somebody, one of the two, had to sell more. Like they had to cert sell so many units before the other brand could sell a unit. It was crazy. It's weird how that how that works. The Subaru and your 86 are two neat-looking cars, but I don't know if they're actually worth the price tag. The what? The price tag. The Supra? The Supra and the GR, yeah. yeah it's a BMW. <laughs> Sadly, and for every Honda, every Toyota enthusiast that loves the Supra, I hate to break your heart, but it is manufactured 100% in Germany. There is my 
tech talk tip today. Don't <laughs> buy a Supra. It is a BMW Z4. There you go. All right. Well, you guys, I think we're going to end tonight. We've got one more going over. Oh, we're going to end with this departure right here. That one's not going to make it out tonight. I got battery flat. I got eight battery flat. Mad me. It's made a good run on the camera for four hours. Almost four hours. Three hours and 45 minutes. So now we know we can at least sustain a full four hour show, possibly longer, on our new equipment. Hopefully you guys are excited to hear that because we've been wanting to do this for a while and just haven't had the time. I've got a rev. The only thing I hate is how loud it is. Yeah, the new. Dude, don't even draw it. Don't. The new rav fours. Ugh. They're so loud. And the new Camry. Don't even get me started on this. They're not worth it. Or not Camry. Corolla. The new Corolla is like econo box. There's no sound deadening in it. The engine's loud. It's like, ha. Huh? Don't, no. Don't. I wouldn't even. No. But thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Devin, for joining us this evening. Thank you. And uh, we will see you guys again on Thursday, probably. We're going we're gonna to try and be here on Thursday. See what happens. Hopefully the parking garage won't be full and we can get back up there where it's a little more entertaining. I know you guys have enjoyed this location. I want to thank all of my moderators, all of my channel members, and everyone who tuned in today. And We will see you again on Thursday. Thank you guys. Have a good night.